Devil Anch was a patriarch of the Hatfield clan during the Hatfield-McCoy feud in the West Virginia-Kentucky border between 1863 and 1891. He led the Hatfields of West Virginia while old Randolph McCoy led the McCoys of Kentucky. This right here is called Stirrit, West Virginia. Uh, it's just down the road from Sarah Ann. This is Route 44. And the Devil Ant Cemetery is about a quarter mile on your right. And Devil Ant's house is about, oh, 500 yards past that, uh, where Devil Ant's uh, home place is, where I uh, did the video the other day. We've already brought you up there a couple times. But uh, this here, what I wanted to show you, this little piece of property right here, this is Cap Hatfield's actual house. This is where Cap Hatfield actually lived. Uh, I mean, it's just a really pretty, pretty, pretty stream. That beautiful little trash here and there, but, you know, has to do with floods. You know, water gets up in someone's house, and you know how it is. Floods are... That's what they do. Uh, this right here is the actual bridge. Uh, Cap, Cap actually built this bridge. This was how you went to his house. And if you look right here, check this out. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. There's a, uh, I think it's brass. Not sure, whatever it is. Right here on the side of the bridge, if you notice, it says, the home of Cap Hatfield. Bridge erected October 30 by Larnset Thompson Contractors. And you can see, if you look, you can see where people have been chipping little tiny bits of concrete and even little tiny bits of the metal out of this thing for souvenirs. And there's not really a whole lot of people who know where it's at. Some do, some do, but not a whole lot. Like I said, it's it's kind of hard to find if you don't know where it's at. But anyhow, this is his actual piece of property. This is where his house was. Now they've got, you know, no trespassing. They got five of them, five no trespassing signs. But I was here the other day with a relative, and I'm a distant relative, so I don't think it'll be too much of a big deal to not go in the property but go to the edge of it just wanted to show you something show you how pretty this was now you can picture i mean you can see all the brush and stuff it's overgrown really bad but you can see where well, there are flowers they had flowers right there i'm not sure what those are called um it's right on the tip of my tongue but i can't think of it but anyhow that's their actual flowers that were planted here you know the family actually planted those flowers here uh, look at that Look at that tree. You know they drove right by this. You know Cap rode right by this many, many, many times to get home. Right there is where the house sat, right there. Now Cap, like I told you earlier, he he really was, you know, he was one of the instigators. A lot of this stuff, the feud would have probably died out if Cap hadn't intervened in a few critical moments um like i said earlier he was he was raised in the feud he was born into it and raised to be a feudist so this was all second nature you know basically it was second nature to the man but um he was actually he was um now this is conjecture this is opinion and we always we make a point you know with historical uh anything historical characters historical events that sort of thing we always make a point to mention, you know, if something is conjecture, opinion, uh, theory, whatever. You know, we always make a point to mention that sort of thing. We try to remain as historically accurate as possible. But uh, a lot of people, we'll just put it that way, considered Cap to be Devil Lance's favorite child. Um, you know how that is. Mom used to say that she wouldn't put a hair between my sister and I. But you know good and well that sometimes if you have 
a bunch of kids and one of them is like you you don't say it but that's kind of your favorite kid so anyway uh Dave Lance he was a captain in the Civil War and when Cap was born they called him little captain because he was like Dave Lance he was a lot like his dad um so like I said they called him little captain and years later um the little part they dropped the little part and he just became Cap for the rest of his life he was called Cap and Devil Ants he went with the name Devil Ants uh when they started calling him that you know uh rumor is that uh Randall may have actually started that that the whole Devil Ants thing but a uh, couple different stories about it so like I said that's conjecture you know where the name actually came from but anyhow I just thought I'd show you guys here I thought I'd bring you here on it was right on the way and show you Cap Hatfield's old house now we're going to go right down here in just a second. Look at that creek, how pretty is that? How beautiful is this little piece of property? Now just imagine this with no power lines and you know, no road, it's just a little horse trail, that kind of thing. How beautiful would this be? How beautiful would this little piece of property be? Fresh water, all kinds of wildlife. You've got everything you could need for the rest of your life right here and leave for sugar salt that's about it that's what mom used to say that when she was little they they didn't really leave unless they needed sugar salt or flour something like that they didn't really leave the holler once you went in the holler you you were there you know your your food came from your food came from there your water came from here all of your building materials everything you needed came from the land and you know that's just that's just how things work that's how you did it if you're crossing someone's land you know you, you want to be respectful and you know that sometimes people can have stipulations like um like the the three mccoy boys buried at the forbidden graveyard uh, no one's been there no one very handful of people through you know in the last 50 years or you know since the boys were buried have actually seen the place and you can get up there but you have to go through proper channels you have to prove that you're actually a descendant to be allowed access and so sometimes like i said you know it can be a problem gaining access to these places and it's always better mom always used to say you'll catch more flies with honey than you will with vinegar so the way i see it it's always best to respect people's wishes and respect their property respect their land i mean you know if somebody rolls up on your property without your permission you might have an issue with that so that's what we're going to do we're going to go down we're going to be polite and we're going to ask and go up and see if we can't get some video of the gravesite. I, I haven't seen this oh got somebody here curious let's talk to you in a minute how you doing <sighs> Okay, I'm close. Y'all like chickens? <laughs> Hi, big puppy, you're fine, honey. Yeah, you're doing your job, I know. Okay, I think I see it. Gabrielle. John John Jonathan Ray Osborne All right back there is where we're going <laughs> And it says descendants only so There it is. That's it. Wow. Cat Hatfield's grave. February 6th, 
1864 to August 22nd, 1930. And Nancy E. Smith Hatfield, September 10th, 1866, and does not have a, a death date. Right there, the one and only Cap Hatfield, guys. Right there. Now, how wild is that? The one and only. A lot of people feel, like I said, without a whole lot of speculation, conjecture, that Cap was one of the prime instigators of the feud. And he was very lucky. He, he escaped. He escaped getting killed. Grew old. Became a lawyer. Became a deputy sheriff. He had a good life. He, he said he was blessed. He said he was charmed. A reporter asked him one time about it. And he said that, uh, that he was charmed. That uh, been in, what was it? Been in 300 gunfights. And... <laughs> And only got hit a few times, something to that effect, and didn't, you know, he got hurt a couple times. The one where Doc shot him in the stomach was pretty bad. But he got over it. He, he healed. And he was, he was a very lucky individual. He really was. He, like I said, he escaped the brunt of the feud and went on to have a very, um, what's the right word? Fulfilling life, I suppose, is the right word. Like I said, he became a lawyer, became a deputy sheriff, had a beautiful little piece of land, beautiful home. But there he is, guys. The one and only Cap Hatfield. Hillbilly Files, legends and locations. Be sure and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you, by the way. We love bringing you out here, showing you this kind of stuff. You guys are how we do it. We couldn't do it without you guys you subscribing to our page uh thank great big thank you to all of our page members by the way yep world war ii lewis berries west virginia private world war ii died in 1961 and over here is Muriel May Hatfield Die Berries, uh, July 5th, 1907 to May 5th, 1988. There's another one there with just marker stones around it, just an outline around it. And I see a couple there. So there are some more unmarked ones here with Cap. Nice fence, though. All fenced in. It's nice. This one in here. Glenn Dye Jr. Uh, U.S. Army, Korea, and Vietnam. 1928 to 1993. Rest well, Glenn. You did well, brother. Robert E. Hatfield. Okay, yeah. I know that is. And Mary E. Hatfield. It's 1897 to 1975. And Mary is 1905 to 1971. And there's another grave back there. A couple of them just outlines. Have rocks outlining them. And that's it. This is Kirk, Cassie, and Nancy Kirk. Glenn. A couple old ones there. But here's a. military always try to point out our veterans mention their names when I see them this is tennis 
Old Glen, West Virginia. Corporal U.S. Army, World War II. December 12, 1924 to September 23, 1972. World War II vet. Nothing but respect. There's another one, too. There's several of them here. This is Joseph Allen Day, U.S. Air Force, April 1st, 1933 to July 20th, 1981. And here's some old ones. Don't know if we'll be able to read these or not, but we'll give it a try. Uh, I, two or three letters. I see a 19, a death date of 1947. I'm not sure the name though. And this is a Glenn as well. Josephine Glenn. Can't tell the birth date, but the death date looks like 1938. I see another military one over there as well. Woody. This says daughter and Woody at the bottom. I can't read the name on it. And this one's Woody as well. Jeanette E and George W. Now, where was that military one? Oh, it wasn't a military. It just looked like one. James B. Sullins. January 9th, 1877 to November 10th, 1957. And you can see there's a few more. There's one. There's one. There's one. Look at that one. <laughs> the wooden, wooden cross and some rocks. And there. You can see there's one under there as well. There's probably, just guessing, I'm gonna say there's several more up here. It looks like one there, one there. So I'm gonna guess that there's several more unmarked ones here. But that's the one we came for right there. Cat Pat filled himself. As far as feud figures go, Cap is probably one of the better known right after Devil Ants and John C. and Randall, of course. But definitely a major player in the feud, for sure. And here he is. Okay, well, we found him. And we found some chickens too. And a really big dog. But <laughs> but anyhow, I guess we're gonna head on out and head on back toward the house. It's just strange, you know, you, you see all these historical characters, all these historical figures, and then you start to dig a little bit deeper and there's an actual person underneath that historical figure. And sometimes, sometimes they turn out to be awesome people, sometimes not so much. You know, sometimes they're, sometimes some of our, some of our subjects of our little stories, they're, they're war heroes. Sometimes they saved a lot of people's lives. Sometimes they had a favorite murder weapon. Wild, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> final thoughts.
like I said, just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> anyway, thank y'all for watching. We'll see you next time. Probably, unless I see you in there. <laughs>